Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in C Sharp and today we're going to be discussing functions, functions that pass with parameters, the difference between by value and by reference, and just a little bit on variable scope. So let's get started. So what if you have a piece of code in which you would like to control when it executes? Well, what you can do is put it inside a function. So all I have here is just a button calculate txt width, txt length, and lbl area. So that's all, that's all you need to know. So going inside of our calculates, all I have is the simple try catch, and I already double clicked the form for the form load event. So that's all I have so far. Okay, so how do we go about declaring a function? So we're going to be dealing with functions. Hmm, wait a minute, why is Adam typing outside of the calculate event? He never does that. Hmm, I wonder why. Okay, so let's go a little bit into functions. So what are the different types of functions we can create? We can either create void functions, which do not return a value. And don't worry, this will all make sense by the end of this tutorial. Then you can have one that actually specifies a data type, which does return whoops, a value equivalent to the data type. So whatever, you, whatever data type you declare as the function, your you'll uh whoops you'll um return a uh anything with that same corresponding data type which again will will make sense so what's the format we go about um declaring one first you type out private which will make sense in a moment when i explain variable scope and how that works followed by the data type then name of function empty parameters which will make sense in the future not print their parentheses but they're also called parameters then opening curly brace and closing curly brace wait a minute private the data type is void so it's not a data type so it's void the name of the function got some parameters but then parentheses curly braces wait a minute this is a function isn't it wait 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 a minute whoa this is a, this is a function too look at that so basically the layout is right in front of you so this is a function and basically everything that goes between your curly braces is called a block a block of code so let's create a simple function that well uh, let's have it just print a message box as soon as the form loads so the first thing we do is type out private and allow me to digress for a moment to explain variable scope the reason why we start out with private is to make sure the vi um, any variables that we declare in there can't be seen elsewhere. So if we create any variables inside this button click event, because it's private, we won't be able to see it in any of these other private, um, or at least any of the other private uh, functions or subroutines. So any functions that you, or excuse me, any variables that you create within your function, they're called local variables. You know, so they can go in there, they can go inside your um, they can go inside your uh, form load event and because these things are private they can only be seen in there you can also um, go up here outside of all your functions at the top and I actually declared constants up here remember back when I declared constants well you can declare constants up here and I ha highly recommend it so it's easy to um, access them and change them but any variables you create up here will be called global variables and basically they're variables that can be seen within all these different uh, functions and also note that in front of a variable you don't just have to go string name equals let's say Adam you can also put a private or public keyword in front of it which if you want a global variable for your class here for your form so all the code that is behind this so it's all of this I like to put private because since it's form this whole class basically is public so if you make this public which is what it is by default so you don't have to actually type in public any other forms or classes that you create will be able to see it so bear that in mind so I'm not gonna get rid of this because we're not gonna be using that oh I will be using it I will be using my name right down here so let's go back to creating our function so we all we did was type out private and then our data type, since we're not going to be returning a value, it will be void. And let's just call it print. And then an opening curly brace and closing curly brace. 
And let's have a simple message box pop up. Dot show. And let's have it say, please enter a length and a width. There we go. And that's all it does. So, so when the form loads, how do we actually do what's called calling this function? Well, all you have to do is to type for void functions. All you have to do is just type out the name of the function with your empty parameters and your semicolon. That's it. So when I run this application, we get please enter a length and a width, and then it loads. So that's really, really cool. Okay, now I'm going to go into parameters. Now, how do parameters work? You see how inside like the form load event, we have this weird object sender, event, whatever, all this kind of weird stuff. Those are parameters, but we're not going to be dealing with that kind of stuff, so don't worry. So what if inside of our form load event, or inside of our calculate and whatnot, we created some local variables? So let's say I could have a string called name, and I set that equal to Adam. Well, because this thing is private, it won't be seen up here, so bear that in mind. So how do we go about passing this name as a parameter? Well, all you have to do is type in the name of the variable. And sure, you can just type in your quotes for strings, um, single quotes for your chars, numbers, for whatever you'd like. But it's more professional to actually put it in as a variable. So now this whole thing is now underlined. Why is that? Well, that's because with a print, with a parameter being passed in, we need to make a corresponding parameter up here. So that since this name is a string, we have to type in string first, then the name. Now, it doesn't have to be the same name. You can call it whatever you'd like. So I'll call it new name instead. And, well, let's use new name. So let's type out new name plus and then a comma and a p so hopefully I did everything correctly I'll save and let's see if this works and it does Adam please enter a length and a width now how does this work exactly so when our form load um, or when our form is in the process of loading we created a local variable automatically called name which is equal to Adam then we called this function print up here which is void, so it doesn't return a value, uh, and we passed name as a parameter, and that parameter is a string. So when we created a corresponding parameter up here, we called it a string called new name. So now we can use new name, which now has that same value as Adam. And that's about it. Then it loads. There we go. Okay, so now let's actually work with ones with data types that do return a value. So first, let's try to catch this information here, and then try to calculate the area. So first, let's create some local variables here. So we'll have double, I don't know, um, user length is equal to convert dot to double, and then text length dot text. There we go. Then we'll create another double called user width is equal to convert dot to double and then text width now we have the user length and the user width when we click the calculate button but how do we get it up into our new function well we actually have to create it first whoops kind of slipped my mind so we have our first private print up here now let's create another one now this one's going to be returning the area right because we want to be able to use the area in our calculate event. So we're going to be calling it private first, but then we're going to give it a data type, not void. So it's going to be private double, and then calculate area, semicolon. Or excuse me, whoops, opening curly brace and closing curly brace. Okay, so now we have calculate area. Now there's uh, two things that we know we're going to be passing in. We, in order to calculate the area, we'll need both the length and the width. So we're going to first type in double length and double width. Now, in your class, you might be taught a very poor length. Length. A very poor programming practice, which is to create a variable such as double total is equal to let's say length times width and then you return that value well let me tell you something about this whoops 
this is not good programming practice because since you're creating another variable it's taking up space on your computer in memory so this is not a good uh, means of returning values when you don't need to if you're going to be using the area inside this function then go ahead and do this but if not just delete this and then all you have to do is just return the in parentheses length times width so that's all this function does very simple now when you're going to be accessing a function that returns a value you'll actually have to put a declare a variable in the process since you'll be setting it equal to something so let's go double area is equal to then you call the um, function so a function that returns a value you must make sure that's going to be equal to some sort of variable so then so we're going to calculate area and then we're going to pass in our user length and user width there we go and then we want to go label outputs whoops label area keep thinking about that is equal to area dot text whoops or no yeah dot to string what am I talking about so did I oh whoops there we go save now let's see if this all works so if I put in 6 there for the length, 4 there, now we get our 24. Now let's use what we've learned so far and create a quick little void function that will actually do this print for us. So we have calculate area, so right under this, let's create another one called private. And since it's not going to be returning a value, we'll call it void. And it's all it's going to do is print area, so that's what we'll call it. We'll be passing in the area as a parameter. So let's type in double area up here. Then an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. And basically what we can do is just cut this right here. So I'll cut it. And I'll paste it into our little function that we created here. And now let's call this function. So all you have to do is type in print, whoops, print area. And then pass in our area that we calculated right here with this function in. So let's see if it still works and six times to twelve so it does now there's one